Hi everyone, here is a video for you to understand the basics of Six Sigma and Lean methodology. Now the objectives of this video will be, you'll be knowing what is Six Sigma methodology, what is Lean methodology, what are the levels in Six Sigma and what are the approaches to Six Sigma methodology. Now first of all, what is Six Sigma? Six Sigma methodology is for quality improvement and quality assurance. So we all know in healthcare laboratories, quality improvement and quality assurance is of utmost importance, right? So this was first developed by Motorola company in 1980s and they even followed the Six Sigma methodology and gave enormous profit. So what is this about? It is by adopting this methodology, we can improve the performance of a process. Yes, we can improve the performance of the process. We can identify the causes of defects and errors and we can reduce the variation in the process. So by all these, we can improve the quality of the process, right? Now, what is lean methodology? The lean methodology was developed by Toyota Motor Company first. And this is all about reducing and eliminating waste. So along the process of improvement, if you find any unnecessary or time consuming or cost consuming steps, they are being eliminated and quality improvement is ensured. So this is about lean methodology. So Six Sigma is about reducing the defects and errors and improving the quality of the process. And lean methodology is about reducing the waste and eliminating the waste from the process. So usually in most of the business setups or in most of the laboratories, applying Lean Six Sigma, Lean and Six Sigma methodology is being currently used and they have given enormous benefits. So the levels in Six Sigma training, if you see, there are various levels starting from white belt, yellow belt, green belt, black belt, master black belt and champion. So these are nothing. Here the white belt signifies, white belt certification for any person is given when he knows the basics of Six Sigma and Lean. Right? So yellow belt certification is given to any person if he knows to, if he knows more than the basics, if he knows to implement the Six Sigma and Lean methodology. So green belt is about finding, identifying the problem, finding the solution. Yes, so these persons will, uh, these persons will be knowing to identify the problem, finding solutions to it and how to improve the performance. And black belt is still more superior. Black belt certification is given to people who are experts. Yes, in both Six Sigma and Lean. So they will coach the entire team. Yes, and they are actually leaders. And master black belt is still more superior. And champions are nothing but they will review the project. They remove any barriers and they encourage the team members. So these are the different levels of Six Sigma certification. So a team consists of various people with white belt training, yellow belt training, green belt, black belt, master black belt and champions. Right. So this consists of a team and each person they are given the certification based on how well they are trained or how well they know about the Six Sigma and Lean methodology and the implementation. So next if you see the approach to Six Sigma. So approach to Six Sigma there is one widely used methodology which is the DMAIC methodology. So what is this DMAIC methodology? D for define, M for measure, A for analyze, I for improve and C for control. So let's see the, the these steps one by one. So first you have to define, yes, you have to define the problem statement. What is defined? 
you have to define the problem statement so let me give you a very simple example in a lab the lab gives 100 error results in the past one month Yes, it gives 100 error results in the past one month. So I have defined the problem statement. This is the problem. This is why my quality is down, right? So the next step will be to measure. So in this measure, in this step, what will I do? I will collect the data. So I will collect all the data about my problem. So uh, like for example, when the lab gives 100 test results, that is your uh, problem. I'll be collecting data, I'll collect statistical data pertaining to this. So the reports and time and uh, time of sampling and time the error reports have been reported and staffs available or in which shift the error is maximum. So these kind of statistical data thoroughly I'll be collecting. So this is under the phase of measure. Next is analyze. So with these statistical data, I'm going to analyze. So I'll analyze the data. So by analyzing the data I had found in this particular example, I had found that the errors were maximum in the night shift samples because there were less number of staffs working at night shifts and reports have to be written manually. So this is what has been followed in that particular lab. So as I analyzed where the error has come from, so I found out these uh, problems. Next, what will I try to do? I'll find, I'll try to find the solution and implement the solution. Yes. So what can be the solution in this particular examples? I can appoint new staffs. Yes, I can appoint new staffs. And also I can install lab software for the reporting process so that I can avoid any manual error. Yes. So I can appoint new staffs so that it will be very supportive and the errors can be minimized. So I have found this solution. Now I'm going to imp uh, implement this solution in the laboratory and I'm going to find out the results. So after implementing the solution, what is the outcome? So that is what I'm going to analyze in this improve phase. Next, if I have monitored the growth, Yes. So after the improvement phase, after I have found the solution and after I have implemented the solution, if I have found good quality improvement, then I have to monitor the growth. Yes. So what is the outcome? I'm going to monitor that. And if there is adequate satisfaction for the clinicians and the patients, I have to maintain that improvement. Yes, that is the control. So I have to maintain the improvement. So whatever improvement, whatever improvement I have made, I have to maintain that. So these are the different approaches to achieve Six Sigma. Yes, so first you have to identify the problem. You have to collect all the statistical data pertaining to your problem. You have to analyze all the statistical data. You have to come up with a solution. Then in the improve phase, you have to find out the solution and implement the solution and record the outcome. So uh, control phase, you have to uh, monitor the growth. So whatever, uh, whatever improvement you have made, you have to monitor the growth. So you have to also analyze the satisfaction of the clinicians and patients pertaining to this example I'm telling you. And you have to maintain the improvement if you have brought that much adequate quality improvement so obviously you can see if you if you have uh, appointed if you have appointed new staffs for the night shifts and you have installed laboratory software for this reporting process definitely there will be an improvement in the quality of the results given yes so that that is what is achieving six sigma okay so this is the approach to achieve six sigma so the process, any process gives achieves Six Sigma when it gives only 3.4 defects per million test results. Yes, so three only if it gives 3.4 defects per million test results, then the process is said to have achieved the Six Sigma. Yes. So in the next video, I would be telling you about various applications of the Six Sigma and how do you measure the success using Six Sigma and lean methodology. Thank you.